Okay. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the Ukeswith podcast with me, Alex. My guest today, well, let's go back a step. We've had, we've had builders. We've had established artists and teachers. We've had shop owners. We've had pretty much everyone you can think of. We've even had legacy ukulele family members. But today, I like to think, of, I think my guest is, he is the ultimate up-and-comer. This is somebody who I've really got a lot of time for. It's Mark Gallagher, everybody. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? Good morning. Uh, it's very much sort of like which one of these things is not like the other. Well, I, you, you kind of, you encompass a lot of things because I follow you on Patreon. And uh, as a result, I feel like I've learned more about you pretty much every single week. But for those at home that don't, could you just give them the, the, the glossary notes on, uh, on who you are and what you do, my friend? Uh, okay, so my name's Mark, as you can probably tell from the title of the video. Uh, I'm a ukulele player from Manchester. Well, I kind of live there in between here in Nantwich, and uh, I, I'm a songwriter primarily, uh, and I originally started like piano, guitar, before eventually not graduating to uke, but I sort of found myself transitioning a little bit, uh, especially in the last four years. 2016, I really got into the whole uke scene of things. Uh, I do various videos uh, of both my original work and a lot of covers and collaborations, particularly over the last uh, couple of years. And yeah, I'm just a ukulele player, I guess, trying to figure my way out. That's good. I think you've, you've summed it up perfectly. Um, the covers thing was something I was going to talk about a bit later, but hey, you brought it up, so we'll talk about it now. Um, you seem to do an, an incredible amount of collaboration with people. I think perhaps more than any other artist I've ever really come across. It seems every week you've got a new collaboration lined up, and how long has that been going on for? Uh, it started in 2019, January. I went traveling. Uh, so for about three months, I lived in Germany uh, and n visited various countries. And it started out as um, just, I, I'm a solo artist, but I have been in bands before. And initially, one of my goals in music was to be in bands. Uh, I've since reached a level of comfort of being like, okay, I can just rely on myself gigging on my own and stuff. But when it came to um, just the feeling of bouncing music off other people, um, that was something I really wanted to capture. And I thought it'd be nice to get these sorts of like one-off moments in time. Uh, so they were quite sporadic. It was people like uh, Elizabeth Pfeiffer, um, Nikki and the ukulele, uh, you might know her from Instagram, uh, and Charlotte Palka from the Bad Mouse Orchestra. Uh, so it was kind of sporadic. It was just the odd ones here and there. And there's an element of cross promotion in there, you know, the idea of, okay, maybe their fans can see this video and become fans of myself, but it kind of just grew into something more to which, you know, now I, I, I do these every Saturday and, uh, I, um, so these come out every Saturday and I've got them lined up and scheduled and I, it's something I'm constantly working around the clock to, um, keep afloat, I guess. Yeah. I mean, you work really hard on it. I think this year has been, a real eye opener. I think, uh, how do I put it? So I don't really follow people on Patreon because after, I mean, I've been in bands for two decades, uh, just under, I mean, 18 years I've been doing the band thing and I've done the solo thing and it may, it's made me quite hard and quite dismissive when I meet new artists. And it's not that I don't care, it's just that I, I've done it. And you, you can only really put so much of yourself into music without it kind of swallowing you up. So, so it's rare someone comes along and I meet them and I instantly just, I see your work ethic and I'm not saying this from a point of somebody that's an expert, but somebody that's, that's done it. And I've re I put the hours in myself and it's fantastic what you're doing. I really, really recommend anybody watching this. It's the main reason I wanted you to have you, have you as a guest is because I felt that if I could, put 10, 15 people onto you. I really wanted to be able to do that. And you know, certainly with your ukulele playing, you're, you're a fantastic uke player. I, having played with you, none of the other guests that I've had on I've actually really played with. But you and I have um, kind of face to face, we've put something together on the spot. And I've watched it back and I thought, oh God, you can really bloody play. And, you know, I just, I. I just wanted to pick you up and this is the best way that I could do that. So, uh, you know, with the ukulele, what attracted you to the uke from guitar piano? Uh, so my goal was 
uh, to be versatile. When I was a teenager, so I first started playing piano when I was about 12. Uh, but my goal was I wanted to be in a band. Uh, I decided, okay, there are four main instruments, guitar, bass, drums, vocals. I decided I could sing, which was inaccurate then, but I was... I thought I could sing. So we, all, we all go. For, we all, we all either think we can't sing or we think we can. And n- at the start, none of us can. You know? uh, singing is very much a not natural thing for me. But I'm glad that I've sort of improved it to where I am now. So I, I learned guitar. Uh, I taught myself that, and then bass. I was just like, okay, it's just like guitar, but root notes, and then arpeggios and stuff. Uh, I went to learn drums, but my mom was instantly like, no, not a chance. Too loud. Too big it's not happening so that made me think a bit outside the box okay what other instruments can i play what are the so maybe you'll get like a country band so banjo and some ensembles like dave brown uh, dave clark five have saxophone i'll learn saxophone and then i saw a clarinet in a car boot sale got that learned that and my goal was um particularly during like high school, I wanted to be versatile. I was in every club playing all the instruments. I wanted to be the utility player, you know? Yeah. So when it came to ukulele specifically, um, that was the same year I learned bass actually. And I went to a guitar fair in Crewe, which is about five miles away from Nantwich here. Um, and there was ukulele Falcon. It's like a derivative of vintage, 20 pounds. And for me, it was just like, okay, I, the concept of strumming chords is exactly the same. Yeah. So I'll just add another instrument to my list, you know, so I can just, my, my list of what I can do is larger, you know. It's like the, like the, uh, the old cerebral CV of, yeah. So when that, when that job comes up, you're familiar with it. I get it. In, indefinite. Yeah. So for me, it was, uh, as for how it sort of took over, I used to be in an acoustic duo and, uh, we lived together in Manchester and I was playing guitar and backing vocals. For me, guitar would just sort of like sit in its case. It would come out. I'd play it for two hours. It'd go back in its case until the next gig. Uh, whereas at home, I was playing ukulele for fun. So in 2016, when the duo broke up, uh, suddenly I was like, right, I need to reestablish myself as a solo artist to all these people who've known me as one half of duo. Uh, and I while I was there, I was also thinking, okay, if I'm going to do that, change of instrument will help uh, it, as, as a rebranding of sorts. But also, um, I wanted to, um, I wanted to play an instrument that I was, you know, playing for fun anyway. You know, in ukulele, whereas guitar was uh, the work instrument. So that's how it sort of took over, and I've just been quite embraced by the uke scene, and now uke's become sort of my favorite instrument. That's awesome, man. That's really cool. I think. Uh... I think there, there must be so many similar stories to that. Certainly, I've gone through a strange transition this year where at the start of the year, I, I was playing in a function band doing weddings every year, um, every year, every week, and two a week. And it was the best. I felt like I was the best I'd ever been at playing guitar. But I've been playing guitar nonstop since I was 13, and I'm 32. So I put the guitar down when the first lockdown started. And despite working with Ukes all the time, I found myself owning a few, but not playing them for fun. And I just, I looked at the guitar and I really felt like it was a chore to pick it up and play it. And uh, yeah, and, I, and do you know what? Since March, I think I picked up the guitar three times. So the ukulele just, there's something about it. And everyone always makes these cringy jokes about how, you know, it's, can only really make you happy so it's a, such a happy instrument you know all of that stuff but i think for me i think for me just during a time where there's so much uncertainty i picked it up and I, I played it and i loved it and it sounds like you know by the end of that duo it was a similar situation yeah it really sort of was um, guitar like i mentioned was the work instrument and i just wanted to sort of again it was a case of re-establishment rebranding but also doing something that was fun for me yeah. In addition, uh, I was also doing uh, a, uh, I was doing a streak of sorts where I was playing a gig a day, every day, no days off. A lot of that was um, things around Manchester, so I'd be walking around the city a lot. Ukulele was just easy to carry. <laughs> well, there is there is also that, I guess, isn't there? And mm. you've you've kind of stuck uh, you've stuck with the ukulele, and you know, looking at and doing some research about you, it seems to have taken you all around the world. I and mean, where where are some of the places you visited that wouldn't have happened if you hadn't picked up that Falcon ukulele that day? 
Honestly, uh, most of the countries I've been to, I, I, I was meant to be playing my 12th country this year before uh, COVID happened. Um, so I was able to do festivals in Germany, Austria. Um, I have visited, uh, I, I did a couple of gigs in the Netherlands, which I thought was fantastic. Um, I went whereabouts, to the US. Whereabouts in the Netherlands? Uh, it was Amsterdam. I only had a day Amsterdam. there. It was a bar called Skek, which is sort of like a student-run restaurant bar thing. It was a really cool. fun time. Um, uh, I've also been to the USA for the first time last year. Uh, that was through uh, KY Youth Fest in Kentucky. And uh, I've just had so many wonderful experiences in th- these various countries. Like I said, almost uh, 11, I believe, thus far. And... I'm amazed at where this box of four strings has taken me, you know? Yeah, man. You know, playing ukulele festivals, you know, Kentucky, for example, you know, what's the difference there? Do you find when you're playing to the audience, are they, are they more receptive because you're a foreigner? Because I found that people were more interested in listening to me because I wasn't from around there. Uh, definitely. Uh, there is that element of, Oh my gosh, he sounds different. Um, so people, uh, various people have remarked during the weekend. I just like hearing you say things. Um, <laughs> yeah. So well, I love that. Yeah. Um, you pay, me, pay me to do that then. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so I, I had a great time. They were quite receptive of me. They particularly, uh, they liked the way I said capo instead of capo. Yeah. <laughs> that was something I noticed. Uh, and there was a lot of bourbon and lots of great food. And uh, just, it was a very... The, the, the weekend felt very relaxed. It felt very easygoing compared to other festivals which I've been to where there's an, uh, a bit of a stressful element. This one felt a bit more relaxed, but I had such a lovely time. It was great. Where do you see the 12th country being? Did you have plans that... You might have already said this. Sorry. My, no, it's okay. My, I've got baby brain. I get woken up at four, at four or five o'clock every day. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so yeah. my 12th country was going to be Belgium. I was going to play uh, a, a ukulele festival in... Um, it was somewhere in the Flemish region that I uh, bruised later. Um, and then like a couple of days before, like a few days before the festival, uh, it got canceled and I'm gutted. Fingers crossed when the world opens up, we can try and run that one back. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah we can only cross our fingers. <laughs> yeah. It might take us a couple of years, but you know, take those couple of years to hone your craft and, you know, I guess the attitude to have is that when you do eventually go and do it, you'll be a better musician and you'll have a better show. Yeah, certainly. Uh, um, it's, it's something that I'm trying to do more of is actually practicing versus just playing at home. Uh, I'm trying to particularly work on uh, my workshops. Uh, I've, I've, I've never been like a, the most natural teacher. So I'm trying to get used to things like being on camera or being in front of people and trying to relay information uh, in a different way to how I might have learned it at high school, you know? Yeah. Okay. Your Patreon has, I, I mean, admittedly a lot of it's um, kind of uh, performance based, but some of the lessons that you've put on Patreon have been really interesting and I haven't really checked out your YouTube, but do you have a YouTube channel with any of these kind of lessons on or is it really just for the, the paid subscribers? Uh, so the, the tutorial, so on my Patreon, uh, it's various chord sheets, tabs and uh, tutorials, which particularly look at sort of the touches, which I add. It's not just going, okay, here are the chords we play, but it's looking at the little touches, which I add that make the song sort of me, I guess. Uh, the, the, they the are, salt and pepper. Yeah. The salt and pepper, yes. Uh, the seasoning. It's it's um, so that's mostly for subscribers. My YouTube channel, uh, youtubecom slash Uh That is um, that's mostly performance based, but I do sporadically uh, have more video uh, on a sort of a, an educational basis. It's something I'm looking into doing more of because um, I've noticed that's where the the trends in ukulele. YouTube and social media are heading so it's something I'm working on but it's not quite there yet uh, I think uh, given time though you, you've got the potential my friend to, to really be one of the uh, kind of premier teachers for the ukulele if that's what you want to do I appreciate that's not what you necessarily want from from uh, as you're still young you know you're only 24 and uh, you want to be a performer but it's you do have a knack for teaching and uh i really hope that you can kind of yeah i I would come to a workshop that you'd run and uh we were due to have you at southern ukulele store this year and that didn't didn't come about either so you could have come to your 13th country which would have been bournemouth um but you we were talking recently 
we kind of got to know each other a bit better. And we're talking about how this year had affected kind of our mental health as musicians. Have you found not being able to busk uh, as much and not being able to get out there has had any kind of negative uh, impact on yourself or have you tried to turn it all into a positive? It's 100% had a negative impact in terms of how I felt. Um, live stream busking, so uh, doing like streams in my bedroom here, sometimes I will have... I'll have those streams where for like the hour that I'm playing, I've got like three or four people who tune in at one time. And I find myself sometimes just getting really down. Uh, it's really easy to, especially during this time, it's easy to think comparatively and look at what other people are doing and what people are achieving versus what you aren't. Uh, yeah. So that's got me down a little bit. But one of the things I have really enjoyed uh, or learned about myself during lockdown was... Um, I noticed like th my collaborations could be channeled in a different way. Uh, so for the most part, they've been sort of virtual instead of like being a live performance of us being in person, I've been able to send my part over to someone in another country and vi vice versa. And yeah, that's opened up a lot more possibilities for me, which is something I am grateful for. It's funny. We just, we funnel what we're doing into different avenues this channel, the, the podcast we're doing right now came about because I found myself unable to go and play every single weekend. And, you know, just not, not just from the stress of losing that financial side, you know, kind of a couple hundred pound every single week in, in, in gig money, but you find yourself just, you're so used to having something that you're, that you're good at or you perceive you're good at and you enjoy putting yourself fully into not having that all of a sudden is so hard. Uh, I, I had the same thing earlier in the year. I just, yeah, I, I did a few, um, I found the ukulele online festivals to be really fun. I've done a few of those. And I think that they've created a closer, a closer bond between what was already quite a close community, certainly compared to general music festivals and guitar festivals, where it's, it's all about kind of, showing who's the best definitely the uke festivals have been about just showing that we're all there for each other i don't know if you found that uh i've done i've not done as many uh of the online festivals but from what i have seen uh, and the the concerts i have been involved with i've i've seen that yeah i like the the fact that we are all yeah as you mentioned that all we're all here for each other but it's nice sort of just celebrating music with each other and showing support of each other it's yeah, it's something I'm really grateful for, for from the result of this year. You were telling me just before we, we went live that you did a virtual festival in the US last night. Can you tell us a bit about that? Uh, sure. Um, Ukulele Gen, it does um, weekly concerts on Wednesday nights. Uh, I say concerts, sort of like jam alongs in which he brings guests along as well. So I was teaching and playing a few songs as part of that. Sadly, due to the time zone difference, it was about 7 p.m. where uh, they were in, in, in East Coast of the US. It was midnight for me. So I'm just very grateful that my family, you know, were so patient with me. But that uh, I had that was a really nice show. Uh, people were very receptive to me, and I feel like I've got some new fans from it. And it's nice to have the support and the encouragement of people. It's it's amazing how like over the last year, particularly of my, I noticed my online fan base, and there are people who I've never met, and they just so so much love and support, and that's something yeah. that I I adore. It's interesting. The Patreon does a lot to boost to boost your uh, confidence in what you're doing because most of the people I have that follow the Patreon here are not people that I, I've met well. There's no one really apart from one, two that I've met face to face, but they're all people that really enjoy the content I'm putting out and that spurs you to create more and sometimes you don't necessarily feel like you want to, but knowing that there are people out there that are willing to actually pay for your, uh, for your art is it's just a fantastic feeling isn't it a hundred percent uh in my case with my patreon uh about half of them possibly more are people who i don't know personally i haven't met but it's uh so that they've, they've been sort of like acquainted with me through the collaborations i've done and they're they're fans of people i've worked with and uh that sort of spurs it on uh it's amazing having the that support and as mentioned it's 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 nice being able to uh, 
be loved and be uh, appreciated and you know compensated i guess by people who really appreciate the content and it's not just because they're your mate you know oh definitely because when you're in a band it's all about getting your mates to your gig and i don't know if you've ever had that where you've played in a band and you've got everyone that you really care about and you sometimes to travel for a couple of hours to come to a gig and then you're on at midnight and no one's watching and they're all tired and you just think why am i putting the people i love through this surely if if what i was doing was good people who i don't know would see it and i guess that we were just in my experience anyway just a couple of years too early and the platform in which those people could be found wasn't there yet so it's good that you found it's good that you found patreon and youtube and where do you see the ukulele taking you in the years to come more of the same or is there an end goal for yourself uh there's not really an end goal uh, i remember when i got into the uke scene back in 2016 a goal of mine initially was like respect i wanted people to sort of view me on their level and i know i mentioned a joke at the start about which one of these things is not like the other i've seen myself on workshop posters with like phil dolman manitoba hal elizabeth pfeiffer me and uh i've noticed the disparity there but a goal of mine was like i wanted to be on festivals and i want people to be like oh you're going to this festival mark gallagher's going to be there so that's a goal for me in the next four or five years um i'd like I, I, I definitely acknowledge how far I have come and how my reputation's grown. And uh, I, I, that's something I'm really grateful for. Um, what I, for where the ukulele is going, uh, I can imagine it sort of doing more of the same. It's more of these festivals, particularly the online stuff. I imagine even when the world opens up, people are still going to try and put on online festivals and concerts and things of that nature. Um, for me in my career, I just hope to release more music, uh, keep it growing. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have part of my, uh, I've been gigging and playing live as my bread and butter for a few years. I'd like to have about half of it to come from like my video work. So uh want to try and make yeah. YouTube a monetize monetizable thing. So that's something I kind of hope for in the future, but it's, I just want to, keep playing festivals in more countries and stuff yeah man that's cool it sounds like you're doing it for the right reasons and you know long may it continue for you i just i guess before we go i just wanted to thank you we did a collaboration recently uh of a milk carton kids song called new york and for those at home that have clicked on it which is a couple of hundred people but those of you watching i recorded my p my part which was incredibly easy really I just had to learn six or seven chords and do a fairly routine harmony. But Mark had to transpose an incredibly intricate guitar part to make it work on the ukulele and learn to sing the lower harmony at the same time. And I just, I guess every time I've shown it to somebody, I've been like, you need to just understand that I really stitched this guy up with this song <laughs> and he made it, he, he really took, uh, well, I, the only way I can describe it is he took chicken <laughs> and turned it into chicken salad. So, uh, so you did great, man. And uh, I just, I'd love to work for you again in some capacity. And I will continue to just sing your praises and really try and put people in your direction. I, uh, I must say, uh, your your microphone is impressive. You're giving me major microphone envy with my uh, my little lavalier mic. You've got that ear trumpet labs mic there. It's gorgeous. I've been a fan of that that brand like for about a year ago. Uh, I first came across it and just really started getting into their stuff. And I discovered various artists through like the, them using these kind of mics, particularly Milk Carton Kids. I came across through Understanding Ear Trumpet Labs. Uh, I'm glad to be an Ear Trumpet Labs artist and get the recognition from those guys. That means That's a lot. That's cool, man. That's cool. Well, look, you have a great day. Take care of yourself. And uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime in the future. Thank you very much. It's been lovely. Thanks, man.